the golf swing release can be a little bit confusing, especially when you look at the tour players, because a lot of what they do and a lot of what you're told to do based on what they do is one, not particularly relevant to you, but two, there's some important factors when it comes to the grip, um, it just even the role that plays in it. But how you move generally and what feels more natural to you is key. Because you look at the likes of Dustin Johnson, for example, or Tommy Fleetwood. These are two perfect kind of, I wouldn't say polar opposite golf swings, but these PGA Tour players have very good golf swings, but they are quite different. And if you're trying to replicate one, even if you're in your 60s, 70s, you, you, you know, you're trying to take some components of that golf swing. We want to extract what suits you best and the feel that is best for you. So we're just going to do a very quick litmus test, right? That's going to give you the feel to say, that's more the foundation that I want. If it's one of those two, because then we're also going to give you a third one that I think is a bit more suitable for the majority of golfers because it's a little bit easier, it's a little bit less stressful on the body and a bit more natural to repeat. It doesn't mean that the ads aren't perfect because obviously it works for many of the top players in the world, but we're talking about playing good golf for decades to come with simple methods, all right? So enough of me waffling on, let's just get into this quick lesson. Okay, my friends, this is the Art of Simple Golf and I am Alex Forte. This is where we're making golf a little bit easier, breaking through that kind of confusion and just helping you play your best golf without stressing yourself out, pinballing from method to method and just enjoying the game. That's the goal. So onto the golf swing release. Let's just go over this really quickly. This isn't an in-depth kind of lesson of exactly what you need to do. I just want you to try this. Even without a golf club, you can do this. Um, just to see what feels a bit more suited to you. All right, that's the key. It's about you, not about what DJ does, but this is what he does a little bit. I'm not saying I'm Dustin Johnson, but you know, you, you'll know that he has the bowed wrist. You're probably very familiar with that. And as he rotates here, okay, he's shallowing and there's this sort of angle and opening up the body and holding on to that sort of relatively square to shut club face, holding it off this way and releasing through, okay? Obviously very powerful, obviously very good, obviously very natural to him. And there's definitely some components that are good for many of us, right? But with that movement of sort of bowing the wrist here, where we're shallowing out, where this wrist is arching just a touch, even in transition, okay? If we're holding that angle off, even just a little bit, we're trying to get into this kind of position here, okay? That's what you'll see, be like, oh man, if I could only get there. And you might be a 20 handicapper and you think, how can I get there? So you'll try and get there, either from a weak grip, remember he's got a very strong grip, so that's gonna make that holding off a lot easier. You try and do that from an extremely weak grip, it's a little bit more difficult. It's a lot easier if you're kind of like that to start with. But anyway, you might be trying to kind of accomplish those positions, but maybe it feels a bit awkward to you. That's why you can't repeat it, even if you're just trying to do 200 yard drives and you're trying to hold it off, stay shut like that you're limiting yourself because it doesn't feel right to you. Because that movement here, right, we're just sort of rotating, holding it off there, okay? Big, wide, powerful legs holding off that way there. What's the difference between that and say a Tommy Fleetwood? Where, he, and again, I'm not trying to be Tommy Fleetwood, I could perhaps sort of grow my hair a little bit and grow it down, but, right, what we're after is what does he do that's that much different to 
um, what did, what's his name? DJ, right? What's, his, what's the difference? One of the differences, and Rory McIlroy is a little bit of the same, and actually many players are the same, I'm just using two people as an example. He's not bowing the wrists in this transition as much here, okay? He's not kind of getting into that position like so. He is a lot more allowing the weight of the club to just sort of drop like this here, but it's basically all sort of dictated primarily from these wrist angles. All right, don't worry about his gripping down the shaft or he holds his angles very well. But what he's doing with the wrists here, he's sort of maintaining them. As he comes back, they're staying pretty much neutral on the way down and on the way through. Imagine if you exaggerate it, just get up out of your chair. Well, you might be standing already, but just don't move this angle here, this wrist angle. Just keep it in the same spot that way. And you'll see that it gives that sort of sensation that is more that kind of finish, which is a la Tommy Fleetwood, you know, short, shorn off golf swing. That's about right. So he's like this, there, okay? And it's all about this wrist angle. Whereas DJ is a lot more sort of bowed and holding off that way. And there's a million golfers either side of this. There's thousands who are very similar to them. But the key is finding what feels right to you. Does it feel right to sort of lay it off and bow the wrist that way? To have that sort of snake, Hovland is another way, something like this, okay? Like there. Or does it feel more natural to keep a little bit more um, neutral hinge, the back of the hand, like this? Well, there we go, got an imaginary golf ball going there. But what feels more natural to you? Now, we can break down these a lot, lot further, but that's basically it. And just see what feels more comfortable, because as soon as you find that, you're gonna get more of a foundation, more of a consistency that's gonna suit you. Now, I did say there's a, like a third one, a bonus one, and that's basically allowing the weight of the club to dictate it and allowing a pulling sensation of the left side. And we are gonna cover this in another lesson coming up, but uh, it's very useful to understand that most golf problems happen for too many of us when the trail side is often the dominant side and it comes over here. So if we kind of soften and neutralize the right arm, uh, trail arm, whatever it is, sorry, if you're, if you're a lefty, and allow the pulling action to just happen a little bit more and a bit more dictated by the rest of the body and sort of allow the wrist to not completely do what they want. We don't want them being vagabonds or anything like playing silly buggers, but we do want to have just a natural kind of release to them without forcing them. That's gonna give even more of a natural sort of sensation for you and a little bit less sort of stress on the body because we're just allowing it to swing through. I don't know why that didn't uh, catch, but we are gonna, you know, there's other lessons where we cover that a little bit more, but I just want you to understand that that pulling and natural flow, really feeling the weight of the club, not gripping tight onto this and having the wrist do all the work, allowing the club to do more of the work for you, all right? So there you have it. Pretty simple, right? But I want you to realize what Dustin Johnson does in his swing, what Tommy Fleetwood does on his swing, and what many others isn't necessarily perfect for you, for one thing, but it's also very different for each individual, no matter what level you are, no matter what age you are. You need to find what feels uh, better to you. And it doesn't mean just straight away, one's gonna feel better than the other, but it'll just make a bit more sense. It'll, f you know, it'll be based on other things you've done in life, whether it's a different sport, activity, something will be a little bit more similar to that movement. Does that make sense? So find your kind of foundation and just play around with it and notice what your wrists are doing and allow the club to flow. And then from there, you can start learning, right? Which downswing move, which impact area or whatever is more suited 
to you, okay? But again, don't always compare yourself to the PGA Tour players because as you can see, they're all different from each other and they're also very different from us, from you. Play your game, but let's play it the best and get the principles and foundations right. Not just in the golf swing, but how you're actually playing the game too. Be precise, no matter, even if you're CAC, it just doesn't matter. Be precise, have fun, and if you do want to take your game to the next level, there's a link below where you can come and join uh, the Artist Simple Golf Club for a great offer, and there's also a free series too. So if you have any questions, leave them below. If you like the video, let me know, and uh, I will see you 